This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of Medem 2014, an interview with Mel Brown, director at the Impressive PR. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. Hi Mel, it's great to have you here at the uh, Medem in Cannes. How's it going? Lovely to meet you. Fantastic. Really worth coming again. I didn't come last year. I missed a year. Uh, but it was a good thing to do. I've come back and seen some familiar faces, met with new people, seen some great music. Uh, and I'm going to see more bands. I've got another two nights. So awesome. So Impressive PR is a UK-based uh, PR company. Uh, what do you do? Basically, get coverage on bands in the music press, all press really, and on online sites. We also look after TV uh, for established artists and radio bookings for established artists. So we really do cover an awful lot, and we. We take on bands or music that we love. It's not genre specific. Yeah. And what kind of artists uh, would you have on, on your roster? Well, uh, I've, my company's been going nearly 20 years now. So when I started, I was working on bands like Muse, who I worked with for seven years and broke them internationally. Um, Coldplay, Snow Patrol. Coming up to the present day, anyone from Kim Wilde, who has been around since the 80s, which she's just had a reinvention and relaunch just the second part of last year, through to very cutting edge new talent, artist called Elle Bourne, who's from the UK, a, a singer-songwriter called Tom Cross, um, just starting on a Belgian artist called Born Crane, who's already successful in Belgium, uh, an American artist called Marcella, who performed at Medem last night, uh, who's totally independent and is very talented, 18-year-old, who writes all her own music. Um, it's extremely varied because we also look after comedians. Right. Right. So yeah. we're 70% music and then about 30% comedy and then events within musical comedy. Yeah, sure. And so uh, talking about uh, the way PR has evolved uh, over the last uh, five years or so, there's been a bit of a sea change in how really uh, uh, everything works. You know, there's a lot of traditional media stuff still going on, but uh, there's, there's been definitely a shift uh, towards digital, which has really changed the way you do business, right? Yeah, that's correct. Although in the UK, I think we're quite different to other territories, especially America, in that we still have the majority of the print uh, publications that we have done forever. Um, over the last kind of, I suppose, 10 years, really, we've only seen about three or four major publications close. Um, so we still are print driven. Online is becoming more and more important. And there's some key websites that you have to kind of get on. And also what's happened is the magazines that are traditionally print, their counterpart online sites have been, become more successful and, you know, Coming more successful than the magazines. Unfortunately, I don't think the industry has shifted necessarily because when we're doing PR, the record labels and management still want to see the print. Right. So there's still a little work, bit of work to be done there. Absolutely. Um, but yes, of course, you can't uh, dismiss the statistics for the key online sites, you know, and also the demographic uh, is obviously a lot younger. For, for the websites, so and, and uh, in the U.S., you were talking about you know the differences uh, between the U.K. and the U.S. In the U.S., I was talking to a few marketing companies that, uh, in the end, it it kind of starts to feel like they have to spill over a lot into marketing as well because there's a lot of crossovers, uh, uh, given that a lot of what happens is user driven. And so you have to make sure you reach out to users uh, sometimes even before you reach out to press and make sure you grow that before you can get press. So how do you, with, how do you deal with that in the UK? Well, not dissimilar. I mean, that's about digital marketing, which we don't do digital marketing because I think that's very specialist. Um, there is some crossover, but it's actually a different skill. Um, we're, we do PR, so we're proactive in selling our artists to journalists, that can do features, can stream videos, uh, can place unique content. Digital marketing is also crucial, absolutely crucial. It goes hand in hand. Uh, and I outsourced uh, digital marketing for this artist, Marcella, um, uh, crucially to increase her stats um, via Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Not so much because Facebook's becoming older and 
Facebook's for my age and not necessarily for an 18 year old. You know, those kids are leaving Facebook. You know, there's other mediums that they're going to. So actually, Instagram's probably the key one there because people love seeing snaps and with a little message on. So yeah, I mean, I think digital marketing is crucial and without that, it's very, very hard to get traction for people finding the artist before the press get on board. Yeah, exactly. And so in, in that sense, you also take on a bit of a growth strategy for the artist together with management uh, when, you, when you do like go out and commission. I mean, a good friend of mine runs a digital marketing uh, you know, agency called Motive Unknown and he does a lot of work on, on, on that front. So It's crucial, absolutely crucial. I mean, what I also do as part of my company, I do project management. Right. So that artist Marcelo that I was just talking about, I do project management as well as PR. So with that, I brought the whole team, all the elements that we don't do. So I brought a digital marketing person in, I brought a national radio plugger in, a regional radio plugger in, um, and I've been strategizing the whole campaign for her because she's an American artist uh, with a UK production deal, but they don't really know how to orchestrate and launch her. So that's just started now. So it's really exciting because it's going great. Yeah, sure. And uh, how would you uh, quantify the impact of print uh, versus, uh, you know, the UK is a very special market because radio is so strong still, uh, you know, when you're talking about the, the yes. big radio network. So yes. uh, how do you, of course, print publications haven't closed yet, but they're starting to see a, a decrease in, in sales. So how, how has that shifted the, the conversation? Online sites are crucial absolutely crucial and um, there's quite often like we just mentioned magazines that have their counterparts so the Fly magazine for example who's which is pivotal for indie music the Fly website is becoming more and more important and quite often now there's not enough room in the print version you have to go in the, the online site but I think the shift is going to become you want to go get in on the online site more than the magazine so there is a definite shift a hundred percent and there's key websites that you have to get on tastemaker websites like the line of best fit which is a really important website for us in the UK you know we, we don't have something the same as a pitchfork in America we don't have anything that, that's identical but maybe that's the closest one to it because yeah. it's Incredible, and it, it, people look to that website. So, also, I think it's cumulative. I think you can also be more selective, and there's also, you know, genre specific websites. So, I think they're crucial, absolutely crucial. They're start of tastemaker sites. So, yeah, and it, it is cumulative. Like, the more websites, the more blogs you can get your artists into the better the word spreads and especially if you have a new artist that may be starting off independently but maybe wants to get a record deal of whatever level independent mid-size or a major label the a and r people are lazy and they tend to look at the blogs and the, the websites to, yeah. to find their acts it's, uh, you mentioned A and R, and I want to pick up on that because uh, uh, you know you uh, kind of act as an A and R in a sense because you have you get so many submissions by bands that you're talking about independent acts uh, that uh, want to be represented by you. And so, uh, how much time do you spend uh, listening to new bands and, and your team? Oh my God, a lot, a lot. And in fact, uh, my company was is 19 and a half years old now. Even from the very start, I think I was probably one of the first PRs to actually be. A and R and PR because I've, that's how I found Muse and Coldplay. Like they were totally unsigned when I started working with them. You know, Muse had was just in the process of signing. Coldplay hadn't signed at all. So even back then, it was absolutely crucial, and that's continued. I would say I find probably, and I represent 70% of my roster is music that I've found. So being proactive in finding. So I go to South by Southwest every year. I go to CMJ in New York every year. Um, and they're great places to find new talent. And obviously in the UK, we, we have The Great Escape, yeah. which is fantastic. And it's grown and grown and grown. And I, I think that that's brilliant because it also brings overseas acts. Yeah. 
it's not just about UK talent. And I think it's a mini South by Southwest. Yeah. Especially with a double whammy of uh, with Great Escape and Liverpool Sound City. Uh, yeah, and also Sound City has become more important. I actually haven't been to Sound City, which is probably bad. But um, I just think because I do the overseas um, thing a lot, you know, there's only so, you know, so many times. But I've got a team of nine people. I've actually got one of my team here, to, here at Medem. But... Yeah, I tend to do most of the scouting myself, but my team are welcome to bring in music that they're passionate about. It's all about if you love the music. Yeah. And uh, uh, you're talking about uh, big acts, uh, and uh, when you're talking about big acts, uh, there needs to be a lot of coordination uh, uh, between uh, the uh, PR people, the digital people, the label, and what's going on, and the, you know the promoters. And so, you know, yeah. do, do you find that uh, the ecosystem? Uh, is making it easy for for this coordination to happen. I mean, I still I still hear about a lot of uh, miscommunications and you know uh, you know difficulties in aligning priorities between oh all these God. different stakeholders. So I have to say, if you're a PR and you're not organised and you you don't have communication down, then you shouldn't be a PR. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, and in fact, it's interesting you brought up promoters because actually we deal with a lot of promoters on a live front that with acts that maybe don't have a record deal but have been around a long time and they tour very successfully so we do big touring campaigns for artists you know a prime example human league one of our acts you know, they they haven't had a record deal for about three years now, but they successfully tour and sell out big venues. So we do their PR around the tours. Yeah, and uh, talking about uh, advice for bands that wanted to get in touch oh. with you, so you know, what would you say are the, the biggest do's and don'ts in getting in touch with a PR company? Well, the best thing to do is email SoundCloud uh, link. I personally do get back to every single person because I think that's really important if they've taken the time to actually send me the music. The least I can do is listen to the music and give them feedback. If I love the music, well, the next stage for me, if it's a live act, I will go and ask to go and see them live because I won't take on an act that's a live act unless they're amazing live. Yeah. Obviously, if it's a dance act, it's not the same process or a pure pop act. Um, but, but yeah, with it's rock, indie, acoustic, folk it's crucial they have to be amazing live so and at that point after that and if i love all of that i will sit down with the management or the label and talk further and the independent music in in a uh, scene in the uk has really uh, become even healthier i think over the last few years it's, it's, just, it's so strong and uh, you know do you see that trend continue a hundred percent it's interesting because i had a conversation with a radio plugger that i've hired in uh, for one of my projects only this week and I actually had a conversation with him and said does this ma does it matter from Radio 1's perspective that the artist is not signed to a major label or a big independent and he's a piv he's a big big plugger a great plugger who looks after One Republic the script Oli Murs very successful UK acts and he said no the music just has to be good and there has to be kind of a, maybe a story. It's not even about stats for Radio 1 now. Yeah. So, so, no, I mean, I think, you know, obviously to be a success it is a cumulative thing. All your ducks need to be lined up and it's a piece of a jigsaw puzzle and there's a little bit of luck involved to become successful as an artist. But no, I mean, I, you know, I love hearing new music and breaking new, new bands. That's what so. you that's great. Well, thank you so much, Mel. It was a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure. Thank and, you. And uh, you should go and check out uh, impressivepr.com uh, if you're interested in knowing more about the company. And of course, uh, have a big international audience. So if you are looking for uh, PR in the UK, definitely uh, a company to check out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thanks so much for listening to the DMT coverage of Medium 2014. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends. <laughs>